TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, little warning screen, just in case. And like I said, we are on Twitch. So go to twitch.com and put in that username down there at the bottom of the screen. You see it. Uh, it's free, man. You can lock in. You can be a part of the streams. Why not? You're probably bored anyway. Just, you know. Um, we also got Patreon where we post five days a week, Monday through Friday. That's stuff we can't watch on YouTube. This is Vice Inside Belfast Deadly Benzos Boom. This is the war on drugs. We are here for educational purposes. YouTube. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Come on, Brindy. <laughs> this is you. Wait, get off the screen. Alright, here we go. Taking tablets is like smoking grass here, you know, it's just so normalized. I've those 10 old grams, we go on blues. Everybody uses them. They're like sweeties here. You just feel like a god after taking it. The half prescribed of all benzos because of the troubles. Here people are taking 50 or 60, 10 milligrams. Of all benzos because of the Somebody drew this? An artist artist this? Oh man, this is pretty tough. My fault. I know that's not why we. Like a god after taking it. The half prescribed of all benzos because of the troubles. Here, people are taking 50 or 60 10 milligram tablets in a go, and their minds are turning blue from the actual dye on the tablet. This is how benzo use has exploded in Northern Ireland, and how that shift is linked to the region's unique history of civil war and terrorism. I don't even know what a benzo is. I'm not even gonna lie to you, never heard of it. Northern Ireland is in the grip of a drug deaths crisis. Deaths in the country are five times the European average and have more than doubled over the past 10 years. Uniquely, these numbers are being driven by the deaths of people under the age of 35, rather than older, long-time users, as is the case in the rest of the UK. People here snore coke and smoke weed just like anywhere else in the world. But in Northern Ireland, there is one class of drug contributing to deaths more than any other. Benzodiazepines, which are often sold oh. as Xanax or Valium and... Got it. Okay. Didn't recognize that name. I do know what it is now. All right. ...referred to colloquially as blues or yellows. We spent some time in a Belfast studio with two young rappers who walked us through the city's drug culture. Do you just want to hear a fucking really beautiful song I made whenever I bought on them, like? When you were full? Oh, I was full, I was full of the fucking tablets, but like, end up making this. I see you looking from across the room. Through the skies and nearly lost the moon. When I was like going through that period of my life where my head was just completely melted. And I didn't really know where else to turn to, I was prescribed them. And then ended up just eating all the prescriptions and got the point, like, my own family and all couldn't even recognize me. Basically, you basically you had like one or two today. Yeah. How does that feel then? <laughs> I'm alright, I'm mad enough, mate. Taking tablets is like smoking grass here, you know, it's just so normalized within the culture here. You always hear about like, oh, somebody fucking stealing a couple of tablets on their granny or something, do you know what I mean? And Granny's one of the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of days there in summer, and I was about to do like the biggest gig of my life. I was getting the fake ones. And then I got like maybe 50 fake ones for like 25 quid. And honestly, there was a good like three or four days. I can't remember most of it. Stuck about 20 in a fucking McFlurry. Uh, and I was just, I was just, I was just munching them and end up fucking getting my hair cut in the middle of a party, falling asleep, drooling out of my mouth and shit. That's real hype type energy. Like, what is. I'm listening to his music in the background. It's pretty decent though. 
fucking in La La Land. Makes you feel fucking invincible sometimes, do you know what I mean? You feel like you're, you can fuck your Superman, but you're actually walking at fucking the slowest pace of your life and you're drilling out of your fucking mouth. Oh, oh. Yeah, here we are. Let's see. This dude, this dude reminds me of Skrilla. I don't know if y'all know who Skrilla is. S K R I L L A. He's like a. I think he's from Baltimore. Or Philadelphia or something. I don't know. But he a rapper, American rapper. But he's actively also like a. A class A. Fiend. But he's open with it, and he's like. <laughs> the king of Skid Row, whatever they call it over there. That's what he reminds me of. He's your... Nothing to be proud of. Hey, man. Boom. If you're anxious, you'll not be thinking about anything that makes you anxious. But there's a fair line between, like, between feeling mellow and then being blacking out and waking up in Moscow at police station. No, I mean. yeah. And see any time I get arrested, just blacking out in blues. Aye, uh, there's stories of him fucking sitting there in a studio, fucking <laughs> where, eat, eating a curry chip, falling into it, and fucking being sick on himself <laughs> and all. Yeah. You're only a kid, it was about two but years old. I did have the time of my life a few times, but then they might have. Brindy, or anybody, y'all can understand them without watching the subtitles? Because I'm glued to the subtitles. I don't know what they're saying. It was about two but years old. <laughs> I did have the time of my life a few times, but then they might have made, like, I would have lost due to them. They might have made everyone we know's lost. It's there's a real ugly side to it. The north of Ireland has the worst like mental health services. You're on big waiting list to get counselling. It's a lot easier for a doctor to just go where's a box of tablets. But the highest prescribed of all benzos because of the troubles. Yeah, we, we carry our, our parents and our ancestors' trauma down from the troubles or the war or whatever you want to call it. And a lot of them have PTSD. And then a lot of the younger people have PTSD from just what they see, just running about the streets and on. My goal is to just to be done with them, do you know what I mean? But it's one of them things, old habits die hard. From the late 60s until 1998, Northern Ireland suffered what's come to be known. I guess, like, his reasoning is uh, kind of valid. Known as the Troubles. Catholic Irish nationalists and Protestant loyalists fought each other and the British Army over whether the province should join Ireland or remain part of the UK. All in all, over 3,500 people were killed before the conflict officially ended with the Good Friday Agreement. But the legacy of the Troubles lives on in many ways. For decades, Northern Ireland has had one of the highest PTSD rates in the world, and consequently, by far the highest benzo prescription rate in the UK. This large-scale prescribing of benzos also seems to have shaped Northern Ireland's recreational drug scene in some pretty unique ways. Traditionally, people don't tend to pair party drugs like Coke and MDMA with benzos, unless they're using them to come down at the end of the night. But in Belfast, it's not unusual to see people popping blues alongside their bumps, keys, and lines. Fucking first night of chaos. We're in the middle of nowhere. There's gonna be some fucking fisherman walking past, seeing fancy people all up all clavers in a kitchen and rapping on a fucking table. There's some colorful characters in here, and I don't just mean because you all have different colored masks. You're not bad. Is that a video shoot or they just, is that the stage? They're in a, in a regular apartment. To see chaos on pool here. You're about to see people fucking sniffing lines off tables and a whole manner of fucking weird shit. I do is 10 more gone. We call them blues. I'd say 80% of my friends use benzos. People use them as a skip. You just feel like a god after taking it, you know? That's why it's so addictive. Our parents, they were all prescribed gambling and diazepam because of the PTSD they experienced in the troubles. And then all us growing up just thought that was normal. They're easy to get, they're cheap. I they just thought of just taking them you know, for fun when they would like, just spiral gold from there. You can take it on a daily basis and like not have like a calm down from it. I get really silly, so I just need like there's probably no short-term effect, but there's definitely a long-term effect. This is a prescription drug that you are taking without a prescription for it and really abusing it. I don't want to sound like that guy because obviously of my 
my past, but at the same time, this is not, this ain't the one. <laughs> this ain't the one. Like, found me on ice skates going about a house party. Then there's obviously people here taking like 10 or 12 and then taking cocaine and going mental. Honestly, they're everywhere. I'm not gonna lie, the party look lit. Now I will give them that. Bro is performing in a an apartment on top of a table to his friends. That's real support. I feel fucking great. I, you know, listen, energy levels are still high. I feel waved out to I, fuck I, that. And I am flying through fucking time and hyperspeed right now, boy, I'm telling you. <laughs> the scale and breadth of benzo use you see in Northern Ireland is fairly unique. Unlike other classes of drug, they're used for various reasons by basically every section of society. Many have their drugs prescribed by doctors, many others seek them out on the booming black market, where they're cheap and incredibly easy to access alongside other prescription meds like progabalin and gabapentin. The current situation Ooh. with benzos is we're seeing a, an increased number of young people using them, and then a, a whole plethora of other people who just mix it with heroin and other drugs to get higher than they were before. Belfast in particular has always had a really strong history of use of benzodiazepines. Record numbers of people were prescribed diazepam and other benzodiazepines by GPs to cope with the trauma of living in a conflict zone. So people were just overly prescribed these drugs uh, as a crutch and it just so happens to made you feel really nice and really good. Here people are taking 50 or 60 10 milligram tablets in a go. You know, they're just eating them in their mouths. They're turning blue from the actual dye on the tablet. But they're cheap. They're available and they, they get the job done. And we've got an increasing number of people looking for help and just not being That sounds all insane. Able to access it. So it's it almost like comes like you're being given permission by services to go and use because they can't help you. We've got, got a lot of uh given permission by services to go and use because they can't help you. We've got a lot of uh, illegal benzodiazepines, people who are buying maybe a thousand blues from India and no way of telling whether those do you have 10 milligrams of diazepam or 40 milligrams or 50 or 60, you know, you just don't know. It's, it's rather inexpensive too. I think it's only about 200 pounds for a thousand of these things. These knockoff prescription pills can have a pretty dramatic effect, especially if you don't know how strong they are. When I was about 17, me and my friends thought, just a bit of, you know, crack, we'll take these tablets, took them, and that was kind of the last thing I remembered. Till about six, seven days later, I got an ambulance rang for me, went into hospital. What did you just say? And I remembered. Till about six, Until about six seven, seven days, days later, later, I got an ambulance rang for me, went into hospital. Apparently, in that time, I'd flatlined my heart. It was going from whatever it was to zero. The doctor in the hospital said, you know, Whatever she's taken is stronger than heroin. I don't know how I'm still here. It's so easily gone. Like these things are from pages on the dark web, and half of them are, they're obviously, they're not what you're paying for. You know, they're mixed with all sorts of shit. You don't know what's in them. As illicit benzo use has skyrocketed, Northern Ireland has seen an unprecedented increase in drug related deaths. Prescription benzos aren't necessarily dangerous in and of themselves. But using them with alcohol or heroin or taking them by the handful can greatly increase the risk of overdose or death. The most recent development in the world of black market benzos is particularly concerning. Recent tests show that nitazines, powerful synthetic opiates that can be up to 300 times stronger than heroin, have started working their way into Northern Ireland's counterfeit prescription drug supply. We know from... Let's see, man, and this is why anything that's pressed, anything that's in a capsule, you should be drug free anyway, but don't, don't, because you don't know what people cutting stuff with and mixing it with, and it's just not safe. It's just not safe. Go ride a roller coaster or something. Go, go ride a motorcycle if you want, if you want to feel a rush.
Preliminary testing that some of the benzo, particularly the, the street or the designer benzos, do have the presence of netazines, which are a strong synthetic opioid within our benzodiazepines. So in Northern Ireland, firstly, we, we have the highest uh, rate of drug deaths in relation to younger people or young adults, 18 to 35 year olds. And we can see that there's been a huge increase in the past 10 years of designer street benzos and ordinary uh, prescribed uh, medical benzodiazepines uh, in the toxicology report. We're specifically different, I think, in Northern Ireland because of the mental health problems that have been created as a result of the conflict. We have the highest rates of depression and anxiety and the latest study in 2020 also indicated that we still uh, have three and a half times the higher uh, prevalence rate of prescribing than England. We do see the vestiges of what we call transgenerational trauma and we see the pattern, grandmothers, mothers, daughters having this issue. Well, y'all need to go ahead and implement something to nip this in the bud. If y'all know it's just PTS and trauma, why don't y'all put more counselors and make it easier? Like, they, they ain't, like, I, I understand that there's a lot going on in Ireland and they might not have the resources, but something has to, something gotta give. Issue with prescribed and non-prescribed bands. And the youth shouldn't have to suffer. The youth shouldn't have to give. Something else should have to give to make the lives of the youth better. The generation born after the Good Friday Agreement were known as the Peace Babies. But amid poverty, continued division and intergenerational trauma, the brighter future they were promised doesn't look like it's materialized. And widespread use of prescription meds as recreational drugs seems to have become perhaps the clearest symbol of this development. The legacy of the Troubles is still clearly visible throughout Northern Ireland. Perhaps the most tangible example being the peace walls that continue to separate primarily Catholic and Protestant neighborhoods. Put it this way, see everyone we know, one of their family members has been shot or had some involvement with this war and seen some things that have traumatized them for the rest of their lives, right? And then that leads to drug use, using that as a, as a way to cope. Because you're fucking traumatized, you know, the only thing, the way you can de deal with trauma is that around here, with some people just take drugs, unfortunately, and I, I the big drug would be... That's not the only way, but, you know, that's what's being... Prescription, tablets, like diazepam. Why do you guys feel the need to wear these masks when you perform? Some of the things we talk about, it wouldn't be... We live in a tight-knit community, so it wouldn't go down with certain people and uh, certain organizations. I think it's a little bit too late to change their voices. I've been a porn of in the past, back in the day, for professionals anyway. Uh, they shot dead, took the person. Public abuse is not a fit risk. The last 10 years, easy. So I understand they were drugs. And they'll pass down on because they are in six of the years. And it's a fire wagon. This guy, they got a mask in as a public and spot that is the extorting drug dealers. Whereas the law is panel, they just celebrate and they extort people and sell drugs and sales. But they're fucked. So the government does fuck all anyway. After the peace agreement was signed in 1998, the paramilitaries didn't just suddenly disappear. And for many, drug dealing became a very lucrative way to continue financing their struggle. Obviously, these paramilitaries from all sides deny that they are in fact drug dealers which, to be fair, is exactly what drug dealers would say. Whatever the truth of these allegations, what's clear is that organized crime groups in Northern Ireland are making a lot of money simply by adding prescription drugs to their usual menus. And sadly, things don't look like they'll be getting better anytime soon, as new synthetic drugs like nitazines creep into the drug supply. Without a radical change of policy from the government around prohibition and treatment, the situation in Northern Ireland is only headed in one direction. We'd like to congratulate yeah, but be careful with them, man, the prescriptions, man. Be careful of your livers, kidneys, and things of that nature. Keep them good.